Good morning. It's a great day to be alive in my right mind, and I thank God for it. Also, I have the power because I'm connected to the power source, Jesus. Good morning to everyone. We're so glad to come before you now. Um, it is snowing over here in North Chesterfield, Virginia. Of course, many other areas, areas as well. I thank God for the snow. I love the snow. Um, I just, it's something about the snow. It's just, it just makes me feel all cold inside and excited. Listen to this. A priest was, um, priest was preaching one Sunday. The sermon that I'm going to preach to you today is about honesty and everyone nodded. Before I begin, I would like all those who have read Matthew, the 20, um, ninth chapter and verse 15 to raise your hands. More than half the people raised their hands. This is very unfortunate to see there is only 28 chapters and the book of Matthew. Sometimes we'll agree to things that's not even there. So this priest uh, tricked them. Uh, our um, theme again for this year is being appointed and anointed in 2022. And it comes from uh, 2 Corinthians one twenty one. Now he which established us with you in Christ hath anointed us is God. And I thank God for that. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for blessing us. Thank you for your word today. <coughs> Excuse me, that the word may go forth, that souls might be saved, delivered, and set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, it's just a good day, a happy day. The title today is Stop playing around with the blood of Jesus. Think about that. Stop playing around with the blood of Jesus. And the subtitle is Don't Play Church. This is a whole and brand new year. What we did and didn't do, or especially what we didn't do last year, we cannot do it now. Or that which was done cannot be undone. Whole new year. Let's make a break. Let's just open the gate wide and, and break loose in the Lord. And so blood. Blood is a noun. The red blood. And listen to this definition real, real good. The red blood that circulates in the arteries and veins of humans and other vertebrate animals. Carrying oxygen to and carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide from the tissue of the body. When I said it carrying oxygen, and I put in parentheses, life carries life, and to and carbon dioxide, I put in parentheses, seeing. Like what? You'll see. The Greek word for blood is ha-ima. Ha-ima. Specifically, listen, specifically the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Blood is vital. It carries oxygen to the veining arteries. Then it removes the carbon dioxide, which is poison. So God gives us life through his blood. Jesus Christ gave life through his blood. And that removed the sin or the poisons from my body. So it's greater than the natural thing. Church is a noun. A building for public worship and Christian workshop worship. An organized body of religious believers. Is it assembly of believers in Jesus Christ? The physical buildings facilitate the fellowship. Listen, the physical building facilitate the fellowship, the worship, and the ministry of God's people, but it is not the church. We are the church. 
the believers. It is based on the Greek word ecclesia, which is referring to the gathering or assembly. We cannot afford to play with the blood of Jesus. Our physical lives, of course, depends on the blood that's in our veins. But life overall and our spiritual lives, most importantly, depends on the blood of Jesus that was shared. That's why we cannot afford to play with the blood, taking the Lord's name in vain or being lazy, lethargic, just don't care, uh, just ignorant of his word. Now, no one person know all the word, but we must be students of the word. We cannot afford to play with the blood. Jesus gave too much to us, for us, that we will play with him. Stop playing church. A, Christ gave too much of himself for us to play around with his blood sacrifice. Remember in the Old, in the old Testament, how they sacrifice all these animals. And I remember even when during the time of Solomon, I think they had probably 20,000 uh, sacrifice. I mean, blood and stench everywhere. Because I remember that type of thing growing up in a farm in North Carolina, uh, a Husky and Kofia area, when they slaughtered the uh, pigs and, of course, the calf and chickens and whatever else we had. But especially the pigs, the blood stench, it, 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 even though it was done in the cold, like this around November and on during the cold season, because everything was hung up on the outside, the stench of blood. But I cannot imagine that we had slaughtered even 500. But when, but that was the Old Testament. It represent that Christ would come on the scene and be the sacrifice, the last sacrifice. B, his blood washes away sins. He would have us to be hot or cold, but not lukewarm because he would spew us out of his mouth. But he rather would, would have us to be hot. Don't be in church and still die in your sin. I, I said this, my first vehicle back in 77 when I was in college at Little City State University, I had a 73 Pinto 5-speed. And I would take uh, uh, some of the other uh, students from campus, we would uh, all pile in that little car. It really was good for two people. We had six people, big football player, John Evans and other. That car was loaded down. Now, we were loaded down to go to church. But why be in the church cramped up in a pinto and go to hell? If you're going to go to hell, which I pray don't want anyone to, at least go in a limousine. But it's best to live this life for Christ. If we go to John, the 10th chapter, the 11, then 17 through 18. John, the 10th chapter, 11, 17 through 18. He is the good shepherd. I am the shepherd, the good shepherd giving his life for the sheep. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life. Jesus said, I lay down my life that I might take it again. He laid it down. They thought they had killed him. But he laid it down. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again and take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Again, Jesus came from heaven to earth to be the sacrificial lamb. He had all authority. He could have called down legions of angels, but that was not his purpose. He suffered and basically was saying, Father, uh, can this cup uh, pass from me? But then he said, nevertheless, that will. If that blood was not shed 
we would not have a chance. That's why we can't afford to play around with the blood. That blood in the natural person, as I gave the definition, it sustains life. But greater than the natural blood, because one day this natural blood is going to leave our bodies. It's going to leave our bodies. It's going to dry up. It's going to decay. But the blood of Jesus Christ shall never be tainted. It never will decay. It will never be lost because it's the blood that saved us. Romans 5, 6, and 8. God gave his love to us even though we didn't regard him. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, that that's our... Uh, when we didn't regard God, when we didn't even think about God, or we were in church and playing church, Jesus' blood is still there waiting for us to be blood washed. Now, the work was already done at the cross of Calvary, but we have to accept that blood wash, the forgiveness of our sins. We have to. We cannot, and I don't know how much more I can emphasize this, we cannot afford to play with the blood. You know, when we were young, our parents would tell us back home, don't play in the mud. Now, you tell a child in the country, don't play in the mud, it, you just as well to tell them play in the mud. You know, we went to the mud. Well, it's almost like, what it is now. Jesus Christ is admonishing us. The word is admonishing us to accept what God has done, to accept the blood sacrifice. And guess what? We go play in the blood. We disregard the blood. I, I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about the world right now. For everyone who is not washed in the blood, except the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you are unsaved and doomed for hell. And hell has enlarged itself. I'm talking to the blood wash. I'm talking to the church and everyone in the physical church is not saved. If there were, would be the case, and the birds that sometimes get in, rodents get in, they are not blood washed. But I admonish us, especially us leaders, as pastors, leaders, stop playing around. I'm talking about me first, because I can do in this flesh anything I'm big enough to do in this flesh, because there's no good thing in this flesh. So therefore, as I'm preaching to you, teaching right now, I, as Paul was saying, you know, he preaches the word, but he has to be careful that he doesn't become a castaway, that he doesn't fall into the same trap. But leaders, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, let's stop playing with people's souls. Let us stop playing with people's souls because Jesus died for that soul that we're trying to manipulate, that we're trying to uh, get mind control. You know, I'm telling the truth. I mean, there's a lot of mind control in the church today, a lot of manipulation. And if, if, if Jesus could say that, he said, what? I didn't die so you pastors and prophets and teachers and all of that could do that. I didn't die for you to mess around with my blood. I didn't die that you manipulate people. We cannot 
do that, afford to do that, because the blood is too precious. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 3. Christ dies so we might live. And in these things, what I'm saying, you've heard them over and over and over. Over and over again. But, but repetition is very, very important because no one retains everything they have heard. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. See, he fulfilled his, uh, the word. The Old Testament talked about him coming. It was grace awaiting at that time. The sacrificial animals. But now Jesus came on the scene during the New Testament. It was grace right there. Mercy right there. So it's important that we eat the whole word. I said it is important to eat the whole word. Don't take and choose which part of the word we're going to obey. They're saying this, God said it, I believe it, and that settled it. Nah, God said it, that settled it, whether I, whether we believe it or not. The word said, God said, let there be light, light. Whether I believe that or not, it's true. God's word is true. Then he swore by himself because he had no one else to swear by but himself. That he had said, I am that I am that sent thee. God is just awesome. And I thank him for it. So I'm, I'm really excited about what the blood did for me. See, I don't want to do anything that's going to offend the blood, offend Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I told you all, and I tell, I tell the rock faith, when you got me as a pastor, <laughs> oh boy, what I mean at that, at my very best, I fall short. Like David, David loved God, but the man, mm, he did some things. But when he found out that he sinned, he repented. And in the New Testament, it's saying how he's a, uh, in the Bible it says, how he's a man after my own heart. Well, I want God be to say to me, Ghouli, you are a man after my own heart. And that, that's, mm, that's what I want. Not that I did not sin, not that I didn't fall short, is that I repented. Not that I deliberately sin because I'm in this frail body. It happens. So I want to hear the Lord say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Now, let's go to 1 John 2, 1 through 4. There's a way out even when we sin. My little children, these things I write unto you. That ye sin not. He's admonishing us not to sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours on, for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So the whole world got a chance to come to Christ. And hereby we do know that we know him. <laughs> hereby we know that we know him. See, we can say we're well, Christian. You throw the word Christian out. Generally speaking, almost everybody's a Christian. But it's not the case. It says, hereby and hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. If you keep his commandments, that his blood died was shed for us. If you keep his commandments, he that saith, I know him, keeping not his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him. See, we don't have to say it by words. We say it by our actions, whether we uh, keep his commandments or not. 
I have said many times because of the pandemic members, sorry for that, had a little glitch in the Wi-Fi. I began to tell the Raw Faith members, since we are all virtual and we're on the go-to meeting right now as I speak, then we're on this social media right now. So I'm talking to two different group of people. But I began to tell them, Shh, let's go to church. Let's go to church. Show your picture on the um, on the uh, go-to meeting app so we can see you. Let's go ahead on and prepare ourselves uh, that physically that we're in church on this media, this platform. So when we get our physical location, as my Pastor Jay always said, lift and lay. But see, in the meantime, we cannot afford to play. Let's go to church on social media. Uh, let me say this too. Here's another way we can play with the blood. Service is going on. You on social media, watching this uh, service all over the world. You're in the kitchen cooking. You are doodling on something. You're fixing your hair. You, you're feeding your dog, chasing your cat. Uh, you're lying in bed. Oh, get up out of bed unless you're sick. See, we become lazy and lethargic and the blood was shared for us not to do that. So don't just show up on church on the given Sabbath, the weeknight services. Let's show up in our willingness to do what God has called us to do. Okay, let's go to 1 Samuel 2, second chapter, 12 through 17 and 22 through 24. The evil deeds of Hophni and Phinehas, greed Immorality, meaning sleeping with the women at the door of the tabernacle. Hmm, this sounds like the church today. Pastor sleeping with the uh, missionary or the minister, male pastor, female pastor, whatever it may be, sleeping with the congregation, choir director think he or she owns the church and everything rises and falls. Because of him or her, there's a battle between the pastor and the minister of music. You need to stay in your place. Minister of music, stay in your place. At that given time, God has not called you to be the pastor. Deacon board, trustees, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I remember, and I've said a long time ago, I got a relative back home. And he's gone on. But he was telling me some 20 years ago or so as I went back home, said, yeah, because he's a, he was a chairman of Deacon Boy. Yeah, I tell the pastor basically what to do and how to do it and when to do it. I was like, oh, my goodness. The blood wasn't sacrificed for us to us up authority to to try to rule over people. So we need to get to get get it together as leaders, because when the leaders are not together, when we're not together, what do we expect with the people? The old saying is monkey see, monkey do, monkey act just like you. So we'll wonder many times, why are the people acting this way? Because that's how we treated the pastors we were under. And that is just messing with the blood. We can't, we just can't do it. So uh, let's go, like I said, to Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, 12 through 17 and 22 through 24. Now the sons of Eli and Hoth, oh, now the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial, of the devil, in other words. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while their flesh was in a seething. And with the flesh hook of the three teeth in hand, in his hand, and he struck it in the pan or kettle or the cauldron or pot or and all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came hither 
Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have a sodden flesh of thee, but raw. In other words, it won't be boiled. And if any man say unto him, Let them not fail to burn that fat presently, then take as much as thy soul desired. Then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. See, we are church people. I'm not talking about the world. We are abhorring the offering of the Lord because we should be giving God our best praise, not just in church, but throughout the week. We should be giving God our best praise. Now, Eli was very old. He was a priest on that time, the priest on Samuel time, and heard all the sins uh, all his sons did unto Israel and all of Israel, and how he lay, how they lay with the women that assembled. Hmm, sound like us at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil doings by all this people. Nay, my son, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the lost people to transgress. See, we can cause people to sin. We are all accountable for ourselves, but we can still cause people to sin because what we do. I mean, I've heard some horrible Things going on on the church, money manipulation, control, power struggle. Like I said, I'm not bashing or condemning anyone else because I can do the same thing because I'm of this ugly flesh. It's the blood of Jesus that keeps me day by day. So I won't fall into those things. And if I should, then I can repent and come back to the Lord, like we all can. It's important, it is vitally important that we don't play with the blood of Jesus. Now, 1 Samuel, the fourth chapter, 1 through 11, and uh, they were killed in the battle because of their deeds. We better be glad that is grace now and not grace or waiting as in the Old Testament. We better be glad. It, even the Old Testament, when the priest went to inside the holies of holies, like once a year, round his skirt, because I think they, were, they say they were barefooted and they had very little clothes on, just that type of undergarment. Skirt, robe, whatever it was. And it was bells around it. And I love the, the, the sound of bells. Uh, I think it's still going on, but I remember as a child back in Cofield, North Carolina, Philippi, Philippi Baptist Church. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, there wasn't Philippi. It was another church. Um, Bethany. I think it was Bethany. But anyway, right in Cofield, Every morning, Mr. Reynolds, I remember him, big man, he will ring that bell because it was in the country, country, rung that bell early in the morning, telling you, get up, it's time for Sunday school, then soon be time for church. So that bell uh, means something to me. It was Philippi Baptist Church. That's what it is. So the priest had around his skirt the bales. So he would go in, and there was another a priest or maybe several more. If he wasn't right, if he hadn't repented of his sins, because he would walk in and the bell would shake, dingle. But if the bell, if the bell stopped ringing, and I think they tied a rope around his waist, I believe. Or tied a rope. And they had to pull him out because they couldn't just go into that. We better be glad, as I stated before, there's grace. 
now because it will be a lot more people dead, even more added to the pandemic. We just cannot afford to play with the blood. Then John 10.10 10 will sum it all up. John 10.10. 10. He came that we may have life abundantly. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to, do, to destroy. And, and I alluded last week to what, how the devil destroys. And when I mentioned about how the sausage were made, and I saw it made as a child by my mother, and how they put the meat inside the top of this grinder, and it was a hand crank, put the meat, and would crank it, and they had this the casings, the intestines of let's say of the pig, and they'll put it on it, and they will grind it, and it will come out in the casing. Then they will tie it off. I mean, they had a way of flipping it like that and tie it off. It it was just awesome. That's that's what the devil does, as I said last week, and it's bad repeating. He'll put us in the casing and then squeeze us in, shake it and tie us up and imprison us. We can't afford to play with the blood. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So the devil encases and imprisoned, but Jesus sets us free that we may have life more abundantly. Now, which one you want to choose? The encasement or imprisonment of, by Satan or the release from prison by the Lord? And also, that's just for our spiritual sins and all. But also, Jesus set us free. Many times we don't have to go into those imprisoned situations. We have a choice. Stop playing around with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us stop playing with church. Because Jesus gave too much, as I said before. He gave too much for us to play with his precious blood. He gave too much for the church, Ecclesia, gave too much that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ gave too much. And then when I said the blood in the, in the uh, Greek, ha-ima, we cannot play around with the ha-ima. We can't play around with the ecclesia. We just cannot afford to um, play. So I admonish us this year, whether this the third Sunday of January, 2022. Let's start today. Let's start today rethinking, refocusing about we're going to be real for Christ. Be hot or cold. I'd rather be hot. And, 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 and I'm not talking, let, let me, let me say this again. I'm not, and I'm summarizing everything. I'm not talking about just wait to Sabbath, wait to the weeknight uh, service, other services to be all holy, to be all righteous, to be all, you know, dress, dress up in a three piece suit and, and your long gown and the nails done and the hell to this side. Well, I don't have any, but, um, there's nothing wrong. With the presentation. It's not the wrong with a good presentation. You don't want to uh, give, uh, as a husband, I don't want to give my wife a necklace or a ring in an old greasy bag. Our lunch bags back in the day, was, they were greasy. Because if we give a greasy bag, an unattract unattractive package, she's not going to want to see it. So what I'm trying to say now, if we try to give people the world the word of God, 
And we are the packages. We are the packages. But if our packages, us, are, are greasy, nasty, cantankerous, evil acting, impatient, unloving, uh, profanity wise, uh, liars, uh, not keepers of our word. And now we're going to try to present this package to the world. They're going to say, we don't want it. The reason why a lot of people don't get saved, it's not that they, uh, many don't want to get saved, but when they see the package, which is us, when they see the package, they're like, wait a minute, I'm confused. You say you are of God, but your package is unpresentable. So, people, we cannot afford to play with the blood. Jesus gave too much. So on to that. If any of you out there want to make a recommitment to the Lord, that you recognize you've been playing around in the mud, like we were as kids, as I said, We've been playing around in the blood. We've been messing around in the blood of Jesus Christ. And you want to stop it. You want to stop playing church. I'm talking to you. If you're not um, saved at all, I'm definitely talking to you. Because why would Jesus Christ come to be the sacrifice for our sins? And that we have a chance to spend eternity with him but we don't accept it. Woe is us. For you who are backslidden, the word said that God is married to the backslide. For you who want to uh, receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit initially and or want to be refilled, I'm talking to you. And lastly, if you want to be a member of Rock Faith International Church, where we are removing walls of separation to serve by the grace of God. It's not us doing it, but him. We welcome you. You might say, well, you all don't even have a building yet. That's all right. That'll come. But that doesn't stop us from doing what God called us to do. Well, I live too far away. We have social media. Or we, we have our partner members who live hours away. You can be a partner. So at this time, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that people be saved today. I'm looking for people to be saved and for them to contact us as many as possible to let us know they got saved on this broadcast today, got reclaimed, filled and refilled, uh, backsliders coming back and that they want to join this ministry that's on the move for Jesus Christ. Let's lay our hands, our arms across our chest and say, Father, I accept your blood offering. I accept in my heart what you have given. And also my hands represent, I protect my heart so I may not sin against thee. I've hidden that word in my heart that I will not sin against thee. So we thank you on today. Catch us on YouTube, Rock Faith on YouTube, Simple Balanced Life, our personal ministry on YouTube. Also, our website. Also, uh, this message will be on YouTube and the website of Rock Faith. And also, I would like to say this. Next week, we will have our Simple Balanced Life New Horizon Mental Health Support Group. We have two great speakers coming forth on this Thursday at 2 and at uh, 6 p.m. Um, so, please... Please tune in. If you need further information, you can always call me at 804-621-5636. And that's it. But remember this. Enjoy every moment of every day to the fullest intentionally.